this. Once you created the application, next step. If you notice this, um, I know I talked about a couple of things, right, in the beginning, like a couple of network. One is edge network, another one is uh, the low power uh, LoRaWAN network. Uh, by default, the LoRaWAN network is not enabled for all the customers um, for security reasons. And uh, based on the request, we will enable to the customer. Uh, and that's only applicable to the uh, subscribed customers where they want to use the LoRaWAN network. And that network will be enabled here. But right now, in this particular account uh, and in this demo, we are going to focus more on the edge network. We will have a separate uh, demo for the uh, LoRaWAN network. So today's focus is more on the edge network. So that's why this particular account has only edge network. Now, within the network, edge network, which is more or like any device, right? Any uh, wider wireless devices that independently connecting to the cloud platform, powering cloud platform, uh, that should be configured as an edge devices. Now, click on the edge device. So I only have a couple of devices. And you can also see here the total number of devices I configured, how many devices I am licensed to that. So that you know that what is your license number based on your subscription and how many devices you can connect with. So this particular account has a 10 license limitations, which is purely based on your need and you can set it up or you can request us to set it up uh, through our uh, support system. Now, a couple of things I already configured it, but just for the uh, demo purpose, let me configure the third one. So this is going to be my uh, new device uh, that I'm going to uh, you know, set it up. I'm going to set it up in this warehousing London, London age. Uh, this is zero one. Um, this is a warehouse in London. Now, as I said, you know, the application name, right? So application that you created in the previous uh, you know, section, right? That's very important because you need to pick and attach the edge device to the application. Now you select the application. I would say that, okay, this one is uh, indoor, right? So I can say that it's a 3G network. It's an independent 3G network. Edge type is 3G connection connector. Mac. Mac ID is very, very important because this is the way that we also uniquely identify the device that connected to that. We don't, uh, as per the following uh, you know, architecture, it doesn't allow the duplicate device communication yeah, to, for a security purpose. We only allow unique devices so that, you know, this uh, duplication or, you know, multiple devices that I think with the same Mac ID is completely prevented for all the security reasons. Um, so today I'm going to create one with, uh, I do have a Mac ID. Uh, I'm going to create one, seven, Okay. And then once I created the Mac, once I entered the valid Mac ID, which is very, very important. And then I create a, I need to create a, a device identifier. This device identifier is additional security check to make sure that the Mac ID, the device ID, and uh, the other uh, configuration that we are creating are important to make the connection to the uh, platform. So we create a, to generate a device ID, just click on the button to generate a, a device UID. Then latitude, let's take, you know, we're going to do it in London, right? So let's go to the Google, uh, type London, Lati, and long. Yeah. So let me take this one. So I'm going to configure because, um, you know, you have to by default configure this um, to make it working. Uh, but this also can be replaced by your device data when the device is attached with the, uh, you know, yeah, automatically it's filled up. You don't need to type anything here on the location. As soon as you fill the latitude and longitude, it's automatically detected. So the reason why we have to enter this latitude and longitude because it is, uh, it should be, uh, it's a default configuration. But when the device is sending uh, with the attached device with attached GPS sending a latitude and longitude, uh, this will be updated by that configuration. Model number, okay, I say that Adreno version number version T. Edge OIS, I just say that embedded edge version number 10. This is all default configuration, whatever you want to configure. And one important point is that, you know, you need to configure this offline um, alert. What does that mean is, if this device goes offline, automatically this, uh, this configuration will trigger the alert to say that, you know, this particular device is offline. To the, uh, so this alert will default go to the admin which is the, who is the creator of this account. 
and they will be receiving the you know the email alert uh, whenever the device is going offline so that's a best way to prevent it uh, rather than you know coming and checking the device application you know device status in this console um, and things like that so this is more practical um so oh uh, yeah successfully created the um edge devices now this is a next step right so once you created edge edge devices now you configure the base of edge device now you can see that warehouse uh, london is listing here you can go back to the dashboard you can see that you know the london also and now you see here it's in the gray color it is not connected one so you can also see here the uh, number of devices three but only two is active means two is connected um one is unconnected right so that's uh, that's the way you know it's indicating that you have not connected it but once you are connected with with that whenever it goes disconnected it will show in a red color as disconnection but next step once you created the edge the next step is to give a access to that particular device now you need to allow the device to connect it right and the device has to be any devices we are since we are device agnostic we don't push the devices through triggering part uh it's more responsibility of the device development uh, uh team to uh, to configure this particular uh, information in the devices when they sending the data by the way uh, following uh, receives the data in the form of json only so if you are sending any other uh, type of data format we the process will not accept it because that's a way we validate it no scripting other things are coming to our platform this is again for the security reason we strictly follow the json structure so we recommend you to send only json structure from your devices now when we created the edge network now we need to create the access for that it's very simple stuff so you select your uh, edge device and then you go here uh, i typically i you know i follow the standard one by the way this username should be unique it cannot be duplicate so each device will have a unique username and password this is again the way that device has to connect with without this configuration device cannot connect it uh, this is the way to provisioning the device to connect it securely this is the way to separate the devices connection this is the way to handling the device connections and all so you need to create a iot hub access and that access detail has to be configured as soon as you create this you know for your uh, newly created edge device yeah successfully created this also gives you a client id this is a unique id created for this particular client uh, which is connecting through uh, mqtt or any other mode now you go have created it if you go to your email id the configured email id you should receive a email about this new uh, new one new client created but you can also see here go to the view and now you have a three options to connect it you know uh, by default you have mqtt access you can also connect through uh, api access udp access also available but it is more restricted to the on request basis right now uh, it is not available for commonly to all but if you want the udp access for your device uh, because of your device limitations you can still uh, connect through udp but typically we recommend you to use the mqtt access so when you click on the mqtt access you will see all the access details everything now this is where you have configured your edge device and your uh, access in the platform so this is where we stop as a device uh, configuration right now we create an application we configure the device we create the access now next step is we need to go on configure our uh, device to connect it as i said device is you know your own uh, devices you can write any device programs any device depending upon the device if it is you are using arduino you can write arduino program or pi you know raspberry pi uh, you can use python or any other language that you prefer to use it but if you want a yeah, simulator program you know you don't need to write a program directly and you want to have access to the program uh, and you still have it we create a sdks we create a simulators so go to our uh, github repository um, you can easily go to that by looking at the sdk repository where you can see a set of uh, you know uh, project so you where you can see a lot of uh, you know uh, programs are already pre created uh, you can see uh, digital twin uh, simulators right udp simulator or api simulator um or the uh, raspberry pi uh, based uh, or uh, raspberry pi based python simulator so now you can go here you can download 
Um, these simulator programs, there are set of sample programs available. Uh, you can run those, uh, run this program into your Python, uh, Raspberry Pi, or any other uh, devices. You can send your data. So by taking you know sample message, you know you will uh, you will see the uh, setup, you know. Um, programs where you have a configure the client ID, uh, device ID, and things like that. So everything you configure it here, and automatically it's uh, you know it works. Uh, so you can use it. You don't need to write a program. You can take our SDKs from our platform. Um, there are other set of SDKs also available for you to you know work on uh, different configurations uh, or different parameters. Now, in this demo, uh, I'm not going to configure any device or anything. I wanted to simply show you how this is working. Um, so I'm creating a simple MQTT client. I'm using already using for testing purpose. Um, so I'm going to uh, demonstrate this. So now I have created a new edge as a, a, a London-based warehouse edge, which is still not connected, right? I created an account, but it is not connected. Now I go to my MQTT client. Um, I create a new client. This is my MQTT client uh, program, the MQTT box, which you can use it for simply testing. Um, so I'm going here as the warehouse London, right? Uh, this is H01 in London location. Um, uh, okay, so this is the MQTT client. So now I come here in my platform, I copy this, the client ID, I replace that here. I don't want this to be appended with anything like that. And then the protocol, very important. The protocol should be uh, secure. Uh, you can also uh, use uh, uh, unsecured connection, but we always recommend to use a secure connection if your device has a limitation or you have a programming limitation in your device, which you cannot connect to the uh, sec uh, unsec sec uh, secure MQTT connection. You can use the uh, unsecured MQTT connection. But I will always recommend to use the uh, security entity connection. Now, I want to have here is the server host. You can't hear here the server host. And then you select uh, server sign certificate. Username password that you already created, right? Okay. And then you also have a uh, password that you configured, right? At this stage, you configure all basic things. You save this. Yeah, now you see here, it's connected. So that means this connection has been established to our MQTT uh, IoT Hub access, through which only you will be connecting to our platform. So all your devices can be connected like that. And uh, this is already shows that, you know, it is connected. But the topic where you need to publish it, right? So this is the published topic, right? So you need to copy the topic where you want to publish it. Very important piece. You need to replace this uh, plus symbol indicator with the help of your client ID or your uh, in a UID, because this is where the uh, the queuing is available for you to send the data. So now I created the Mac uh, UID. This is where the uniqueness of the data also stored. Uh, whenever the different devices sending data, uh, all each and every device data not going to the same pool. It's all going to the different pool. So you need to configure this particular uh, you know section to make sure that it's going to the right topic uh, where this uh, messages are isolated. It's, that's the way the process also working in the backend. Now, everything is done, what's the data I should send it? Yeah, very important piece. You, as I said, you know, you have to send uh, um, the JSON structure, but just to give you a testing purpose, you know, to give you a pre pre-configured one. So we created this sample data format based on your client ID and your configuration. It's all pre-filled with that. You take it and put it here. Uh, but I wanted to reduce this payload. That you can send the two type of uh, JSON structure. You can send a simple plain key value pair uh, JSON structure. Also, you can send a, a nested uh, JSON structure where you have to send the multiple sensor data and you need to group together by nested payload. Uh, you can do that. Uh, but for, uh, for this demo purpose, I make it as a simple. JSON structure. So here, a couple of things you need to note it down. Um, you need to send the device UID. You need to send the client ID. These two things are very important because connectivity wise, we have certain protocol to validate that whether the correct device is send connected. Number two, whether the device is sending the correct data or not, right? That validation also is happening in the back end. 
we execute that value not only that value your data rules your um, you know data verification uh, data processing is works based on the device so if you configure a device and you want to apply a set of data rules to a specific set of uh, or you know uh, devices you need to identify the devices so this is kind of header information that you send along with your payload and then that's the way it identify that so you need to publish it right so so i have configured the device id uh, as well as the client id to say that this is the device that is sending data each and every device has to send a unique data now this is published okay now i have published it which means the data has been published it's connected i could send the data to the cloud right as of now this is done all the um, you know device connection part right going back to that device management we should we created application we created the edge device we created access for the device we configured the, the device in the device side we have sent the data so now we have done with the device uh,